Uh, you all know what came next. A week that began with Trump launching a Twitter tirade at Hollywood legend Meryl Streep ended with a Trump broadside against the civil rights legend who was a hero to his Democratic colleagues and a revered figure among African Americans. Donald Trump on Twitter yesterday, Congressman John Lewis should spend more time on fixing and helping his district, which is in horrible shape and falling apart. It's not really, but that's what he said on Twitter. Uh, Donald Trump going on to say, not to mention crime infested. Rather than falsely complaining about the election results, all talk, talk, talk. No action or results. Sad. Now, to be fair to the president-elect, John Lewis threw the first punch here. John Lewis had to know what he was doing. A leading Democrat, a leading figure in the African-American community, choosing the weekend before the inauguration to say illegitimate, uh, knowing knowing that Donald Trump is particularly sensitive about that word. Absolutely. I mean, we, we know that Trump uh, likes to respond to basically every perceived slight, but he is particularly sensitive to the idea that he was not legitimately elected. I think we should state clearly he was legitimately elected. He is going to be sworn in Friday. He won this fair and square. There are questions about Russian involvement in the election, but no one has alleged that Russia was involved in actually changing well. the results here. But, you know, the question about Trump, when he takes office on Friday, he is going to be under so much scrutiny. He is going to get this from the right, from the left, from domestic and international critics. He cannot let slights go. Is he going to continue to operate in this space where everybody who says anything that he disagrees with is going to come in for a Twitter counterpunch? Huh. I think the message that we got from his counterpunch to Congressman Lewis is that, yes, that's how he's going to operate. I, I, if, if, if you're still waiting, if you're still waiting for Donald Trump to change, <laughs> we went through this in the Republican primaries. We went through this in the general election. We've gone through it in the transition. If you're waiting for him to change, uh, you know, find something else. Find another hobby. Yeah, I think <laughs> we're gonna, we can expect morning tweet storms at 5, 6 a.m. every day. What was remarkable, in one of the polls uh, that came out last week, the Quinnipiac poll, it said that a majority of Americans, by S significant amount, 64 percent, I think, yeah, yeah, don't want him to tweet anymore. They want him to close his Twitter account, especially younger voters, even Republicans. I think there was a slight polarity who actually wanted him to keep his Twitter account uh, open. But in those same polls, uh, it, it showed that he doesn't really have much of a honeymoon period right. compared to the rest of uh, to other past. Republican presidents and Democratic presidents. Even George W. Bush, after the contested 2000 election, had a much stronger uh, a rating going into office right. than he does. And that's a risk for Donald Trump coming in. And it shows in it, the question whether or not he extends an olive branch to, to his critics or if he goes after them pretty aggressively. Right, that, that, that's, a, that's a key point because Donald Trump, he won the election, fair and square, he is a legitimate president. When he is sworn in, he will be a legitimate president. I'll keep saying that all week long. <laughs> However, he did lose the popular vote and Democrats focus on that a lot. And one of the criticisms is that he has not, from Democrats and, and left groups, is that since the election, 67 days ago, he has not spent much time trying to reach out to them. Now, we're told he's preparing a speech that will be a unifying speech to the nation. Will people listen to it after he's in all these Twitter wars is one issue. He did meet with the president of the AFL-CIO near the end of the, this past week. He brought in the entertainer Steve Harvey, said he wanted to help talk, talk with him about the African-American community. But there has not been a lot of outreach. So that's why the Lewis thing to me is interesting. And again, John Lewis went first. Um, and that's clearly sending a signal. Once he did that, we went from, I think, 10 to 18 Democrats who have now publicly said they will boycott the inauguration. I suspect that number will go up even higher. What does it tell us about hyper-partisanship, the mood. We thought maybe there would be this moment because Democrats say maybe we can work with them on some issues, but I don't think so. Well, I, that's what I think. It, it, this tells you something about Trump, but it's something we already knew. It also tells you something about the Democratic reaction to Trump. And I just would say beyond the strategic part, which I don't think it's wise to call him an, an illegitimate president, partly because many Democrats who should be voting Democrat and should have maybe voted Hillary Clinton in, in John Lewis's eyes, voted for Trump, and they are not illegitimate, and they exist, and they're ordinary people, to use the president's term, who got involved and made change, big change. Um, but beyond that, I don't think it's particularly healthy for elected officials to call him an illegitimate president when he was elected legitimately. And before the election, many of those people were rightly complaining that Trump was signaling that he might and undermining the Democrat, undermining de public faith in it's, democratic institutions. It is not good for society. And I, I said that at the time about Trump, and it's not good when the other side does it either.